This is a lab-grown diamond. You can't tell just by looking at it, nor can jewelers without sending it to a lab. But it costs 30% less on average compared to a mined diamond, which means a $10,000 ring suddenly becomes seven grand. So we wanted to put it to the test. That's, That's really That's so cool. awesome! The first thing we had to do was get a lab-grown diamond. So we turned to a startup run by a husband and wife duo that specializes in selling custom-made lab-grown diamond engagement rings. Ada Diamonds is a bespoke fine jeweler that sells jewelry using exclusively laboratory-grown diamonds. So we found Ada Diamonds to create the company that we wish existed when we were going through our own personal journey to build a custom ring. They buy diamonds from labs that grow the gemstones by subjecting carbon to extreme temperatures and pressure from industrial presses. And that pressure is equivalent to the pressure that if you took the entire Eiffel Tower, you flipped it upside down, and you put the point of the Eiffel Tower on top of that carbon, that's the pressure it takes to make a diamond. Using lab-grown stones, they make rings much the same way other top jewelers working with mine diamonds do. In fact, their diamonds are even rated by the same independent gemologists, rating against the same grades of color, clarity, cut, and carat size. So most people wouldn't be able to tell because it's just a diamond. Correct. I guess we'll have to see about that. We took their $4,000 one carat solitaire ring, which would normally cost about $5,000 if it were a mine diamond, to the streets to see if people could tell. I'm going to say that ring is about $10,000. I'll say $14,000. I would take a guess that that's like $5,000. $14,000. I don't think I'm at that point yet to know, but like... What if I were to tell you this is four grand? I was wow. going to say that, 4000 Oh my god, I might get engaged now. <laughs> yeah. But the real test came when we put the ring in front of Diamond District jewelers. Not a single jeweler could tell it was lab-grown. Yeah. How good it's good? To me, it looks like it's a real diamond. Okay. Yeah? In fact, a couple jewelers even offered to buy it for the amount they pay for mine diamonds. I said I'd be closer to three and not on the upper side. One jeweler even offered to buy our diamond and replace it with the lab-grown diamond. It's going to be like a real diamond. It's going to be like a real diamond. But the mood shifted when we revealed that the diamond we brought in was a lab-grown diamond. It's an LG. Oh, Gino, this stuff for me. Lab-grown is... That's, That's when things got ugly. You get yourself into a lot of trouble. I'm just trying to see how much it's worth. Zero. Nothing. It has no value if it's lab grown. So clearly, this ring isn't worth nothing. But it did raise the question, why do we buy diamonds for engagements in the first place, and why are they so expensive? Quick history lesson. In the past, Americans didn't spend much on engagement rings. But that all changed when De Beers, a diamond monopoly, started running ads tying diamonds to the idea of eternal love in 1938. That diamond is symbolic of a pledge. Impressing upon young men that buying a more expensive, bigger diamond was the only way to prove your love. De Beers sales shot up 55% in three years after the ad campaign began, according to investigative journalist Edward J. Epstein. So they convinced the public to start buying diamond engagement rings, but getting people to spend more came next. How much should you spend on an engagement ring? I don't know, but I spent 20% of my income on, my, on her mother. So how much was that? We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Generally, it's about maybe two months wages. What is that so rule? the rule that people say is it's three months salary. If you're wondering where any rules come from. The diamond engagement ring. How else could two months salary last forever? A diamond is forever. De Beers. Oh really? Oh my god, I'm just a guinea pig, aren't I? In a way, De Beers pulled off a capitalist dream. As a monopoly, it controlled the world's diamond supply. Through marketing perfection, it spurred demand, which allowed it to control a diamond's price. As its monopoly unraveled, the industry as a whole clung on to the idea of stressing certain diamond characteristics that became known as the four C's, cut, clarity, color, and carat size, to justify charging more. It's something we learned when we spoke with Dennis Dalton, a trusted jeweler in New York's original diamond district, who sees competitors charging more for diamonds that are rated higher on paper. But can anyone tell? So what they're not saying is it's outside the human vision range. Then the question is, why are we measuring the invisible? to raise the price. But you could say the same thing about lab-grown diamonds. If they look the same, get rated the same, and cost 30% less than a mine diamond, why wouldn't you go lab-grown? The problem with lab-grown is like if you bring the di natural diamonds back to us and we want to trade them, sell them, or something like that, there's always a market. Yeah. But on lab-grown, I don't know, I don't want, I wouldn't want them back. Yeah. Because I don't know how to sell them. And I, I, I don't know, when I work with women, it's got to be real. <laughs>
it's not gonna happen. I don't think it's gonna happen anyway. If you were getting proposed to, mm. and the guy revealed that he bought you a lab-grown diamond. Oh, I'd love that. I would love I'd be like, that. that is so cool. I'd be like, take me. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be mean about it, but I'd be like, why couldn't you get me a real diamond? Do you think that women care about it? Like whether Hell, they get a real? Yeah. Probably depends on what kind of woman and how, you know, right. like I, I wear stuff from Target. I mean, I wouldn't want him to propose with like a cubic zirconium or something, but if it's a diamond, I don't know, I wouldn't have a problem. In fact, if you want to upgrade me and get me a lab grown <laughs> diamond, I have no problem with that. I'm good with that. Thanks for throwing me under the bus on that one. <laughs> In the end, whether a new generation agrees that a diamond from the ground or a lab should be a symbol of love will determine how the industry and social norms adapt. Pulling out of the earth is definitely like something that would be like, wow. But like, I'm not just going to say no to the guy if he has a lab-grown diamond. It's still a diamond worth some money, and it's going to be shiny on my finger, so I don't mind. The only reason diamonds are the kind of money they are are historic reasons. It goes back to Cleopatra. I mean, there is a mystique to diamonds. Yeah. So when you take the, when you grow them in a lab, the mystique is out of it. Yeah. I know it's like, because this, the natural stone goes back to the beginning of the earth. Yeah. I mean, it's, there's a permanence, there's a meaning to that. It's like a, a romantic thing to it, you know.